First of all, thanks for coming out with the nice sun. Uh, a lot going on. It's been we hadn't we hadn't stopped over <laughs> over in the Tui Center. Um, I'm probably speaking for Kermit as well, but as far as our program is concerned, we've been going nonstop. Um, extremely exhausted, uh, but necessary exhaust because we had a lot of people we had to replace on the roster, in large part due to, you know, the extra year was really a pain. So you were kind of held hostage. You didn't know who was coming back, who was leaving. Even Shakira Austin had an extra year um, that she just didn't utilize, obviously. She went to the pros. So, uh, But we had several like that. And so we were put in a position where we had to kind of wait to see um, what our numbers would look like. And then I think in these days and times, you always have to expect to lose three maybe uh, players. Luckily for us, we didn't, we didn't lose any three of our major offensive scores um, as far as who could come back, you know, with that being uh, Angel Baker and Madison Scott. Uh, we were able to keep them intact. And so this offseason was just about adding pieces uh, to the puzzle. Point guard play was something that was extremely important. We were able to get that fairly early with, with Maya and Brooke. And then um, adding some shooters. Uh, needed to get that Ilana Eaton uh, is someone that can stretch the floor pretty well. And um, and then obviously we needed I mean, – shoot, I guess – we need a little bit of everything. <laughs> we needed, uh, our focus is not trying to replace Kira. Um, she is is a lottery pick for a reason. We wanted to get interior presence and we were able to do that with both Rita and Taya. Um, and so that has been our focus and what we're trying to finish up with is maybe signing another PG and uh, another interior player. Three, four. Questions in the room? I know you obviously haven't had this group together, mm -hmm. um, but just scratching it out on paper, looking at things, how much better or, or, or will they be as good do you think mm -hmm. this group can be? I don't know that I can speak on that yet. You know, I, I do know that we were intentional about getting things we needed. Just like last year, you know, the, the acquisition of getting Monk and Angel, obviously, we needed those pieces. You can see how much they impacted us. Um, I feel like we've done the same thing. You know, there were some holes that needed to be uh, filled, if that's what you want to say. And, um, you know, as far as depth's concerned, um, we, we have uh, premier leadership with Maya. Uh, that's played at a high level. You know, we have the familiarity with Ilana um, and Brooke, who was at Auburn, and Marquisha that committed to us uh, mid-year. I think a lot of people forgot about her. Uh, she's a part of this class that will be coming out as well. I can tell you this, they're, they're all talented, and I thought that uh, we were intentional about getting pieces that we needed to reconstruct. So at first I was building, it's no longer that. It's now reconstruction phase and, and putting in cornerstones for us to be successful. Talk about now that you can't replace Shakira mm. and, and what you're looking for, but with Rita, what are you kind of looking for yeah. with, with, with what you want to get out of her? Well, what I'm excited about with Rita is Rita is a physical post presence. She's a shot blocker and she's a rebounder. Um, anything else that we get from her as far as her scoring around the basket, uh, developing her with, um, you know, giving her more tools to her game uh, is going to be a plus. But I can tell you walking in the door, you know, she is going to rebound and, and she's going to protect the rim. And she's extremely physical, pretty efficient around the basket. So really, she was an important piece too, you know, because not only – the Kira graduate, so did AP, so did Ianla, and I know they didn't score a lot, but their presence, uh, we had options. And it's obviously going to be a lightning rod anytime you bring someone over from an arch rival, but can you guys just talk us how you got the recruitment of Maya and just kind of yeah. what attracted her to Ole Miss after State? Well, um, Maya loves Mississippi. 
She loves the state of Mississippi. Um, it was a shot in the dark. Uh, when she got into the portal, I reached out and said, look, you may not even respond. <laughs> so, but I want to let you know that I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, she took a couple hours and, and then responded back and we were able to get on the phone and talk for hours. And I thought that that was the beginning of the recruitment process for us. Obviously, she is familiar with our program. I think Maya has been extremely loyal to Mississippi State. Uh, this will probably be the first year I'm at ease with talking about them because I respect her so much. Uh, but she loves the state of Mississippi. And I think that that was a deciding factor for her, uh, going somewhere where she felt like she can be close to home. We're closer to home uh, with Olive Branch being her home than Starkville was. So she's really at home now, and I know her family is excited, but she, was, she, she is a key piece for us. Make no mistakes about it. Now, if you talk about wanting to get deeper at point guard, wanting to have better yeah. point guard play, with all the emphasis you put on it, how much deeper do you think you're going to be at point guard this year? Oh, uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be pretty deep. You know, we had to play Monk on the wing so much last year. That, that helped us, obviously. We won 23 games, but that is not how initially it was designed. Uh, so now with Brooke and Maya, and then we're still recruiting, um, we'll probably go international with this other uh, recruit. Uh, it's going to be huge, and that's something that I want. I love fifth-year seniors <laughs> as point guards. They're so much more mature. They've been through so much, uh, but we're also trying to – stagger it by bringing in a freshman um, that, that we're in the hunt for right now. That, can, that will be an impact. I've talked to these ladies as, as they've committed to your program. They were all at the time unsure when they will arrive this summer. Do yeah. you have a date for their arrival? Even Singleton last night, she yeah. didn't know exactly when yeah. she was going to be here. Well, right. Uh, so, uh, Taya is expected to come um, for in August. The rest will be here um, at the end of at the end of this month. Is this May? Yeah, at the end of this month. <laughs> I don't even know what month it is. At the end of this month, the rest will be here. But we also have a couple, uh, probably international players that will come in August as well. You you were talking about Maya Taylor, and Nick asked you about that kind of odd situation. It's not very often that a star player from your arch rival comes to your school. And I've talked to, to her about this, but what do you think that does to kind of ratchet up the rivalry? Because they didn't want to lose her, right. and they certainly didn't want to lose her to Ole Miss. I'm not sure. I think the, the rivalry is pumped up enough. Uh, so... You know, what, this is what my pitch was to Maya. I told her, I said, do not look at, at me as a head coach at Ole Miss. <laughs> like, look at me as someone that you want to, as the individual. I'm not looking at you like, I'm not trying to get you because you are at Mississippi State. I'm trying to get you because we were in dire need of a point guard. You know, Mimi uh, graduated. We felt, we both felt like it was time for her to move on. And then Monk. Uh, also graduated. We needed a point guard. And, uh, you know, and it was that we didn't really talk about, you know, we got that out of the way in the beginning because for me that's not important. I, I do think Maya loves Mississippi State, and she graduated from there, and there were a lot of special moments. But I am excited that I'm, I'm going to be a part of, you know, her final chapter as far as collegiate basketball is concerned. And so we just focus on making the most of it. Obviously, you're talking about all these new players, but you did bring up um, Maddie and, and Angel. And mm -hmm. I guess the aspect I'm curious about is is how much of, of your busy schedule has been kind of making sure your current players are yeah. getting taken and poached. I guess yeah. what, what is that kind mm -hmm. of aspect of things now? Yeah, well, it was very aggressive immediately after the season. Actually, that was my first um, order of business. That's why we didn't get a break. Usually I would give them a break. We'll talk about the summer. It was like the pros. We were having exit meetings. Like, hey, are you coming? Are you going to stay? Are you going to leave? 
Uh, Maddie was poached pretty uh, aggressively, uh, but she remained solid. Um, Snuda is, is homegrown. Uh, she made it very clear that she wanted to be here. Um, Angel has her last year. She's focused on you know, having a consistent environment so that she can really produce. Uh, Destiny had already transferred um, and, and, um, and Kwikwi, Marquisha came in December. So we just focused, it was really making sure that we, uh, that Maddie would stay put. Um, and a lot of people uh, tried a lot of channels that were illegal to get her. Uh, but luckily she stayed put and um, wanted to be a part of this. So a lot of time was spent on that initially. Um, and then it was like, okay, who do we have? Because I needed to find, I needed to know who we had. You know, I didn't want Caitlin to leave, you know, but, but she decided that it was best. I didn't, actually, I didn't want any of our players that went into the portal. I didn't ask them to go, you know, so it wasn't anything where it was, it was like I wanted them to go. I would have preferred had they, if they stayed. Uh, but the, the, the environment is very competitive. Uh, and the portal gives people a free, the freedom to make decisions that they think is best for them, and I'm okay with that. W would you tell us if any of those schools that tried to poach Maddie are on your upcoming schedule? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, they're, they're, no, they're not. Uh, <laughs> they're not. Um, the SEC teams, they know better. Um, it was more so more – from back in her region, and and sometimes it was not through a coach; it was players. Sometimes players want to; they players do a lot of recruiting. You'd be surprised. <laughs> players recruit, man. Uh, my players get to work uh, when these kids get in the portal. Like they're working just as hard as me because they want to win. Um, but I I can tell you this: there's been a lot of change uh, with my program, and that usually happens after success. And I am extremely excited about where we're going. The, the, the number one focus is now to establish a reputation that we are an NCAA tournament team. And the way to do that is by doing it consecutively. And so that is, that is our new focus. It's not we got to get into the tournament. You know, that was last year's message. Now is, okay, we want to make this normal. So, uh, because I tell you this, when we got on that floor against uh, South Dakota, I felt the newness right away from my group. You know, I think it was only two of us that had that exp experience. Uh, the rest of them were like, whoa, this is really another level where South Dakota was a very old and experienced team. So that is what we want to do, build that familiarity where we're like, okay, we're going to the tournament. Now, how do we advance? You know, and we're not there yet. It's getting back there again and showing that we could consistently do it. Talked about your move from rebuilding to reconstruction, yeah. and renovating. But yeah. for you, uh, recruiting mindset. How was that transition? I mean, you still kind of look for the same players. I mean, how does that? How you switch that kind of mentality? Well, luckily, because of the season we've had, uh, we have uh, been exposed to a different level of player. We've also been putting in a lot of work for years with a lot of players. So one of the things that the portal, you, the portal is, is love, hate, man. Sometimes you love it, sometimes you hate it. Like for me, I am wiped out <laughs> because of the portal. Uh, I like the fact that I can go in there and shop around. I do not like the fact that I hadn't had a, uh, my staff had a second to take a break. Um, so that's been, because balance is important for us too. And uh, we hadn't had the chance to do, to do that. What we wanna do for the 23 class is we wanna sign a, a good amount of freshmen that we think can come and help build the program like Madison, like Snuda uh, did. And, and, you know, hey, we had four of them and two, two are still around. In today's recruiting society, that's good numbers, <laughs> you know. So we're going to go after um, some players. But what we've done is from year one, just like how I showed you all the bill, we showed them the bill. And what they've been able to do is watch it. So they really don't need a lot of convincing 
that we, that I am the type of leader that is going to do what I said was going to happen. So it's more so now them figuring out how to navigate with the new NIL environment if they and figuring out if it works for them because the portal does change what your roster looks like. Um, and so I, I, that's why we're trying to finish off this 22 class because that, our 23 class is a big focus for us um, as we move forward and as we build. So in a perfect world next year, I maybe only want to sign two, three portal kids. You know, I, I don't think any coach can go in and say, I'm not messing with the portal because then you're not evolving. Like, come on. But you don't want to use it as a means of survival. If you could stay away from that and you can just get it to fill spots that you need to fill, um, that's, what I, that's, that's what I'm going to use it for. Does it devalue a little bit recruiting high school kids into your program now that, you know, when you bring mm -hmm. them in, and I think you mentioned you had 50% that yeah. stayed and 50% mm -hmm. that left. You've got four years mm -hmm. of fending off these poachers <laughs> to keep them here. Yeah. If they work out, everybody's going to be coming after them. I mean, yeah. how does that change the balance for you? Yeah, there are pros and cons to it. Um, if I'm going to be completely transparent, you know, it's tough recruiting freshmen now just because you don't know if they're going to stick with it, you know. The days of... You know, waiting your turn um, are becoming very slim. <laughs> People want to play now and right away. And if not them, someone in their circle does. And it makes it extremely challenging. So one of the things we're trying to figure out as a staff is, all right, we get these freshmen, let's make sure we communicate with them what their four years will look like before they even come. And if that's being brutally honest, like, hey, you probably won't play your freshman year. But your sophomore year, you know, your junior year, these things are, are likely, um, that's what we have to do. Uh, but we, we try to hit it hard with our, 20, our freshmen by bringing in people that we do think that can impact uh, right away. One of the things that I think is a positive for me as a coach is I play a lot of players. Whereas there are a lot of programs, you know, they play six to eight kids. You know, y'all saw I was playing. I, I, if I could, I would have played 11 all the way through. Um, and so that's my philosophy that um, they know if they come here that they'll probably have an opportunity to play. Now, how many minutes? You know, but everyone, I think the, the, the job is tough for the fresh, the high school kid. You know, I ask parents all the time, like, how do you all decide? You don't even know who you're going to play with. You know, you walk in in this team and you love them. And do you make a decision because you love the team? I don't know that you can anymore. <laughs> you know, like, how, do you, how does a parent and, and, a, and a high school kid make the decision? They have to bet on themselves. They have to think about them. Do they fit and what works for them? Is this a place where they think that they can come and be successful? And um, so everyone's figuring out how to navigate through it, but it, it, it can be discouraging because you put in a lot of work, you know, um, and you want them to stick with it, and they don't. You know, I thought that we had some kids that left. I thought that they would have had great junior seasons, um, but they wanted to do something else. So what do you do? <laughs> yeah, but luckily for us, everyone has the same drama. <laughs> so, so you just navigate through it. This might be a silly question, but do you have boards or sheets of like players that you think from other teams might transfer? Do you try and keep track of that, oh, yeah. or is it purely reactive? No, 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 absolutely. You pay attention. You Sometimes we go in and we recruit kids we know we're not going to get, but we recruit them for the second time. Uh, for example, Ilana Eaton. Uh, she's from Arkansas. It came down to us in Arkansas. I didn't think we would get her. She wanted to play for her state initially. Uh, but I knew if it didn't work out, we would get the call. And guess what? We got the call. As soon as she went to the portal, we didn't have to go after Ilana. Ilana called us. Had we not put in that work two years ago, maybe she, don't, she doesn't call us. She calls someone else. So now you got to be in the game for later. And it's not praying that it doesn't work out. Uh, but 
just putting yourself in a situation if it doesn't work out, you know? <laughs> so uh, and that and that that has been the case. Ilana, uh, Rita, uh, Brooke, there were all uh, relationships, Taya, that we already had from recruiting them in the past. The only person that um, we didn't recruit in the past was Maya because when I got here, she was already at Mississippi State. It's, and this is kind of off, I guess, out left field, but are you getting, is your program or your players getting any assistance from the Ole Miss NIO Collective? Yeah, well, see, the rule has changed now. So, like, at one at one point we could um, – there was there was a small time where I felt like we could get involved in, in in it. At first, it was hands off. Then we could get involved, and now I think it's back to hands off. What I can say is, we have players that have had NIL deals um, in the past, and um, what I can say is, we are working to figure out how to navigate through this because it is going to spill over to the women's side. Now, I don't think the women yet have started this pay for play. Like I've seen it in football and men's basketball. Women are just getting deals, Sports Illustrated. I mean, all I mean, major deals. If you look at the 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 athletes, the top 4 athletes that uh uh made money from NIL, 3 of them were women. <laughs> so, I guess maybe it's easy to market. I don't know what it is. Um so it hadn't been a lot of pay for play. I do think that if it started football, men's basketball, it usually then comes to us. I, I am very worried about that um, because, you know, we're going to follow the rules around here, and I don't know if everybody else will. And um, uh, the rules followers usually uh, struggle <laughs> with this, but that is something that we're going to do, and we're just going to try to, navigate and figure it out you know one uh david my last hire boyan is an international guru the reason why i did that is because i don't know how we're going to navigate the landscape in america recruiting consistently uh long term uh but i know that there is an untapped uh, it's not untapped people are in it but it's not as polluted a uh, market internationally and the conversations I'm having with 23s over there uh, is next level. Um, these are pro players. And so I'm excited about doing something different. And I think that's what I had to do with my staff. I had to say, okay, what markets are we not tapping into? And it was international. And I think Ole Miss is a place that can probably do well with that market. Questions on Zoom. Joe, go ahead. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Uh, congrats on your um, contract extension as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I guess with that, I've got two quick questions for you. With your contract extension, and you see how the form is going. For you, is this year just like a different set of challenges as far as filling holes? Or mm -hmm. You come into it saying, "Oh, okay, each year I want to have some veterans like you moved earlier." I guess now that you know you're going to be there, does that change how maybe you recruit you the year? You know, now that you've got time. And yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't aware that I wasn't going to be here at some <laughs> at some point. Uh, I, you know, I so. The contract extension came because it's like more money involved. It's it I I already had a, a pretty healthy contract. So I knew that the chances of me being here as far as that's concerned were likely, you know. Uh so as far as how we recruit, I kind of we we're, we're all learning how to navigate through this port man, this portal and not only the portal, I don't think people are talking enough about the extra year. That extra year has stuck a wrench in uh, how we go about things in, in a lot because there's so many unknowns. Like at some point, you're going to have to start making tough decisions and being like, like it, there was a point, Joe, I had to tell some of my seniors, like, look, I don't plan on bringing you back, you know, just because I needed to know what I was going to do. I couldn't be left with 
uh, the uncertainty of if they were coming back or not. And so that definitely was, uh, has been a challenge. In a perfect world, I would want to recruit freshmen, um, as many that I think fit what we're trying to do. And then uh, if someone leaves our program, fill them with portal kids. I, I don't want to make it um, a living for where we're just in the portal. But I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because the portal is a part of recruiting now. So it's just trying to find that healthy balance. One thing that we have been talking about is staying away as much as possible from the one year portal kid. Maybe having a kid that can give you at least two years. But if Maya Taylor shows up in the portal, well, you don't take her because she's a one year kid. No, you have to take her because she fits what we're trying to do. And so there's too many unknowns that happen um, that, that does not allow us to come up with an exact formula. We kind of just take it every year, Joe. Every year, let's see what we got. Okay, this is what we need to go get. Well, definitely, and quick uh, follow-up announcement. Uh, I guess with the absence of Shakira and the girls that you're bringing in, how different do you think this team is going to look, mm. uh, given the roster makeup, the players that you, you know, have targeted, and what you think you'll have mm. by the time you're assembled? Well, we'll definitely look different. Uh, just from a personnel perspective, we're gonna we're gonna look different for sure. Uh, you know, Kira came and and had two good years. It's funny when I watch her in the league, I'm like, oh well, she did that. Oh, that's our defensive. You know, so uh, hopefully she's seeing that uh, her time here has helped her in in the W thus far. Um, <clears throat> but you know, that part of Team 47 is over, so it's now just focusing on Team 48. Um, and um, and what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. The goal will be to get us together, and uh, staff included, and figure out how we can bond and gel as quickly as possible. And so now I'm glad we have 13 games in the non-conference where we can kind of learn each other and uh, because conference play is going to be key. Cam, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Hey, Cam. Um, uh, how did, I know y'all had a great season last year, but did it the way y'all wanted to. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to any of the returners, and are they kind of just chomping at the bit to get back to it? And how do you take that next step? I know you said now yeah. you're not rebuilding, you're reconstructing, mm -hmm. but how do you take that next step with the players you already have in, in addition to you? Yeah, well, they're excited. They're excited. You know, they got, they got a taste. Of, of what's to come and what it's like being in postseason. Um, we know we, you know, it didn't end. I always struggle with, like, did it not end the way everyone wants to win? But in the NCAA tournament, there's only one team that doesn't lose, you know, and that was South Carolina. So at some point, either you're going to win a national championship or you're going to lose. Uh, for me, I thought it was just a phenomenal experience. Our returners have been very focused. I think that, you know, our sophomores who are now juniors are excited about the opportunity to, uh, I guess, maybe lead in, in, in their own right. Um, they have been uh, working extremely hard. And, um, you know, I'm excited about that nucleus, you know. Having Snudder, we have Snudder, uh, Maddie, and Angel, who potential, who Angel could have started. We chose not to, especially when we felt like she could get six man of the year. Um, then we started just bringing her off the bench, but she played starters minutes. We have three of our players that played starters minutes, and I expect all three of them uh, to have impact seasons this up is this upcoming year, uh, especially Angel Baker. You know, she really got hot at the end of the season. It usually for a transfer, if they hadn't been a part of the SEC, takes them a year. Uh, so we have big expectations for her uh, next year.